video programs under this lecture series are highlighting various research methods and data collecting tools which have already been mentioned in our social science textbooks at higher secondary level. In spite of this, these programs intend to represent all contents and details with having visuals and suggest references for further reading. This lecture series is very useful for students, teachers, teacher educators and researchers. Sampling in Research Hello dear students, today we are going to discuss about various aspects of sample and sampling which play an important role in research study. First, meaning of sample. The word sample is originated from Middle English term a sample, which means a smallest part of whole quantity. Sample is understood as a small part of anything or one of a number, intended to show the quality, style or nature of the whole specimen. Sample means small part of anything taken for inspection. It means a part of anything taken or presented for inspection or shown as evidence of the quality of the whole population. Sample means fixed part of a statistical population. A sample is a fixed part of a statistical population whose properties are studied to gain information about the whole. It can be defined as a set of respondents selected from a larger population for the purpose of a study. For example, if an investigator wants to select four students from a group of 24 students for the participation in the general knowledge quiz, that means the selected four students are called sample of the 24 students called as population. Meaning of sampling Sampling means the process or technique of selecting a representative from the population. Sampling means the act, process or technique of selecting a suitable sample or a representative part of the whole population or objects for the purpose of determining parameters or characteristics of the whole population or objects. Sampling defines the procedure of drawing some part of an aggregate. Sampling is defined as the procedure of some part of an aggregate or totality on the basis of which a judgment or inference about aggregate or totality is made. Sampling indicates the process of obtaining information from whole. That means Sampling is understood as the process of obtaining information about the entire population by examining only a part of it. Sampling reflects the process of selecting units. The process of selecting units from a population of interest is also reproduced by sampling. So that by studying the sample, it is generalized that the results can be applied back to the population from which they are chosen. For example, a small unit of population is selected from a large number of population groups through the processes of sampling. Characteristics of a good sampling First, representating process in fact. Representativeness is not the property of the sample but of the procedure by which the sample is obtained. Second, having small sampling error. Even in good sampling, there may be small sampling error which is always acceptable. Third, minimizing economic burden in sampling. Sampling procedure helps to minimize economic burden for study. Fourth, avoiding systematic bias in sampling. Systematic bias in sampling is controlled in a better way when study is conducted. Fifth, fixing reasonable size of sample. Reasonable sample size is required to collect information related to all components from the study population. Sixth, comprising confidence and reliability. Results can be applied to the universe in general 
with a reasonable level of confidence and reliability. Seventh, holding all features in sampling. Sampling must have all the characteristics which are present in the population. Now, we are going to discuss different types of sampling. On the basis of its function, sampling is divided into two types. One is probability sampling and other is non-probability sampling. Probability sampling is based on the concept of random selection, whereas non-probability sampling is considered as non-random selection. Further, probability sampling methods are divided into five heads. First, simple random sampling. Second, systematic sampling. Third, stratified sampling. Fourth, Cluster sampling. Fifth, multi state sampling. Simple random sampling is a sampling procedure in which every element of the population has the equal chance of being selected. For example, an investigator wants to know the average technological knowledge of total 30 students in a class. Instead of investigating all 30 students, the investigator decides to examine the knowledge of 10 randomly chosen students. The 10 randomly chosen students then form sample. These 10 students can be used as an estimate for the average knowledge of the whole class of 30 students. Second, systematic sampling. In the systematic random sampling, Investigator selects the units in a fixed interval of time and the elements of the population are put into a list and then every element in the list is chosen systematically for inclusion in the sample. For example, an investigator wants to know the average general knowledge of the 12 girls in a class. Instead of investigating all 12 girls, the investigator can decide to know the general knowledge of the systematically chosen four girls through a selection after discarding every two of systematic arrangement. These four chosen girls then form sample. The average general knowledge of these four girls can be used as an estimate for the average general knowledge of the whole. Third, stratified random sampling. In this form of sampling, the population is first divided into two or more mutually exclusive groups based on some categories of variables such as geographic location, grade level, age, income, etc. and all groups are called strata. Then, subsamples are randomly selected from each stratum. For example, population of a study contains 24 students at a class an investigator wants to take a sample of four students. Students may be mutually divided into two groups based on some variables and all segments of six students form strata. From these two strata, further, two students of each group means total four may be chosen from the whole. Fourth, cluster sampling. This sampling refers to a type of random sampling plan in which the population is subdivided into separate groups and each group is called cluster. There is small variability within clusters and large variability between clusters. And the investigator collects data from the sampled clusters. For example, in a city, 36 schools are available. In the first stage, three schools are selected out of 36 by using simple random sampling. All these three schools are called cluster or a family. Students of these three schools are considered as sample size and investigator must collect data from the sampled clusters, that is, from all students of these three schools. Fifth. Multi-state sampling. Multi-state sampling represents a strategy of cluster sampling 
in which larger clusters are further subdivided into smaller clusters and investigator randomly selects the sample from all clusters. For example, in a city there is availability of 12 schools and investigator wants to take a sample of 4 schools. In first stage, all 12 schools are divided into 4 groups or clusters. Further, in second stage, only one school from each cluster, that is, total 4 schools, are selected for the study. Further, non-probability sampling methods are divided into 4 types. First, convenient sampling. Second, quota sampling. Third, purposive or judgment sampling. Fourth, snowball sampling. First, convenience or availability sampling. Convenience sampling is a method of choosing respondents who are available or easy to find. For example, in a class of a school, there is availability of 100 students. An investigator wants to take a sample of 17 students. At randomly, investigator can select 17 students who are accommodated in hostel of this school. They are always available in hostel and very conveniently, investigator can collect information from them. Second, quota sampling. Quota sampling is defined as the representation of the major characteristics of population by sampling a proportional amount of each population group which has already been segmented. For example, an investigator wants to survey on visually impaired 100 students where 50 students are boys and 50 students are girls. So, the investigator continues to contact individuals having a proportion of say 10 boys and 10 girls in each group for the collection required data. Third, purposive or judgment sampling. Purposive sampling is a sampling method in which elements are chosen based on the purpose of the study. Purposive sampling may involve studying the entire population of some limited group or a subset of a population. For example, thousand students are studying in a school. An investigator desires to survey on those hundred students who belong to low income groups. In this case, the investigator will purposely have to select those hundred students who belong to the low income groups for collecting relevant data from them. Fourth, snowball sampling. Snowball sampling technique exists to study the subject who recruits future subjects from among their acquaintances. Thus, the sample group appears to grow like a rolling snowball. For example, a teacher in a school faces contagious disease. Anyhow, Investigator comes in close contact with him and collects information from this person. Further, this respondent informs about the other persons who are suffering with the same problem. This way, sampling uses a small pool of initial respondents to nominate other respondents. Advantages of sampling First, requires smaller amount of respondents, saves time and money. It involves a smaller amount of subjects, which reduces investment of time and money. Second, provides accurate study and helps for control over the respondents. Sampling can actually be more accurate than studying an entire population because it affords investigators a lot more control over the respondents. Third, manipulates smaller statistical data easily and avoids human error. Statistical manipulations are much easier with smaller data sets and it is easier to avoid human error 
when inputting and analyzing the data. Disadvantages of sampling First, potential bias in the selection of suitable respondents. There is room for potential bias in the selection of suitable respondents or the investigators. This may be because the investigator selects respondents who are more likely to forgive the desired results. This may be because the investigator selects respondents who are more likely to give the desired results. Second, chances of committing the errors in sampling. Due to inadequate sample size, there are chances of committing the errors in sampling. Third, inadequate information without cross-check. Varieties of information are always collected from inadequate respondents without having any cross-check. Today, we have discussed about sampling as a procedure of selecting respondents. For further reading, you can consult the mentioned references and visit the following websites. In the next lecture, we will discuss about questionnaire.